So you just got home from the fish store and you got a brand new fish tank and you're ready to set it up. But hold on, don't go too fast because if you're anything like my situation, you may have been steered in the wrong direction. So you're gonna wanna stay tuned and get, listen to what I have to say. So it happens far too frequently where someone comes home from the store with a new fish tank and they've been told just to let their fish tank sit there for a week so that it could cycle on its own, which does not happen. Now it can be very exciting and you can become very anxious at first because you got a tank, now you just need some fish to go in it and you're, you, you want it in there. It's, gonna, it's the whole purpose of getting the tank. But the process that needs to take place is called the nitrogen cycle. You're essentially creating an ecosystem where your fish could live and thrive while you only have to provide them with minimal care. If you do not go through this process, you're gonna end up with fish deaths and it's gonna become very frustrating. I went through it and I didn't understand why they were dying and no one at the store could seem to explain it to me. So as a beginner, this is by far the most important video you're gonna watch and it's gonna take a lot of patience from you and keeping fish is supposed to be fun. Now this first part may be a little bit more difficult but I assure you, once you get through this, it'll be a lot more enjoyable and you can go through your life enjoying your fish. So the first question is, what is the nitrogen cycle? The nitrogen cycle is essentially the process of building a beneficial bacteria that will convert waste from ammonia into nitrates. Now beneficial bacteria will colonize things like your gravel, your filter media, as well as any hardscape you may have in your tank. One thing that gets confused a lot is that beneficial bacteria does not live in your water column. Therefore, transferring water from one tank into another tank does not assist in the cycling process. Now, the three stages are going to be ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate. These are also referred to as your parameters. I highly recommend you get an API Freshwater Master Test Kit because it's going to be more convenient for you in the long run. And also because you're probably going to need it several times, not only during the cycle process, but as you keep fish, you're going to have to use it eventually. Now, going back to the, floor, to the store, it's typically free to test your water, but it can become an inconvenience. Now, the first parameter, ammonia, is highly toxic to fish. It's produced through fish waste, uneaten fish foods, as well as rotting plants. This is how the typical cycling process will work. You're going to want to start off by testing your tap water because you want to know the original parameters that are in your tank. Once you choose a cycling method, ammonia should be present in your tank. Nitrites and nitrates should not read above the original levels that you got on your tap water test. Next, nitrites will appear. Nitrites appear because a beneficial bacteria has colonized that's converting ammonia into nitrites. Now this is a slow process. so. You should still have some ammonia in there, but it'll be less than what you originally had because they were converted over to nitrites. Then lastly, nitrates will appear. So now your ammonia should pretty much be gone. You should have low levels of nitrites, and now you have nitrates available. Once again, a new beneficial bacteria has appeared that can now converts nitrites into nitrates. Now once you've got your nitrates in the tank and your ammonia and nitrite levels are reading zero, you have finished the cycling process. Now you want to double check and make sure that your ammonia and nitrites remain at zero before adding any fish. Also, remember your colony is small, so you only want to add a few fish at a time. Your tank has been cycled, but it's not truly established yet. It'll take time for your colony to spread out through, through the whole tank. Now the nitrates are left in the tank, but don't we want to get rid of those? Yes, essentially we do, but nitrates aren't as harmful as ammonia and nitrites. So nitrates don't become toxic to the fish until they become until they start to read at high levels. You'll start to see them get to 40 ppm, which means parts per million. And you'll understand more about that once you get it to look into your API test water kit. Now, the methods for removal of nitrates can only be done in two methods that we're aware of. First one is plants. And plants will assist in the removal of nitrates by consuming them. It's a nutrient that, they, that plants consume in order to photosynthesize. Now to truly get rid of nitrates, you're gonna to have to do the maintenance. And what that means is you're gonna to have to do what's called a water change. 
Typically, everyone does a 10 to 20% water change on their fish tank at least once a week. This will usually control the levels of nitrates so they don't get exceedingly high. Now, the amounts you change can depend on your stocking as well as what type of fish you have in the tank. So you'll want to look into what the proper water change process is. Now I'm going to give you a brief breakdown on each cycling method. It's going to be up to you to do additional research on the one that best fits you. So the five cycling methods we're going to discuss today will be one with fish, two with boosters, three fishless cycle, four plants, and the fifth one seeded or already cycled media. So the first method is with fish. Now the fish in method will require a lot of monitoring and a lot of work on your part. So keep that in mind if you're going to choose this method. Before we move on though, I just want to make sure you know that you need to dechlorinate your water prior to adding any fish in it. So if you live in an area where you're utilizing tap water, there's probably going to be chlorine in there. So what you're going to want to do is use a chemical, uh, the one I use is Seachem Prime, and it'll dechlorinate the water for you. Now with the fish in cycling method, it's likely that the fish may die. Now that's an unfortunate thing, but it happens with a lot of beginners because we don't truly understand how to properly take care of the fish during the fish in cycle. If you were a, a more experienced person, you might be able to adjust the tank's parameters to save the fish. During the fish in cycle, you're going to feed your fish very sparingly, okay? Only once a day. The fish in method is the method I chose to do with my cycling. Now, I wasn't really aware of all the options out there, so you're already a step ahead of me than when I started by watching this video. Now, the fish in method can sometimes be considered a little cruel because fish deaths will occur at times, as well as it's pretty hard on the fish because they're gonna have to go through high levels of ammonia at times and survive through it. This is why when you do the fish in method, you wanna make sure that you choose a hardy fish. If you choose a, a weaker fish that's not used to tolerating different levels, it's gonna die on you immediately. So a lot of people like to use uh, feeder fish or danios or sometimes even guppies. Now the second method is boosters. Things like uh, instant cycling, tetra safe start, sea camp stability. Now be careful when you pick these up at the store and always check the expiration date because a lot of these things only have a short lifespan. So I find the booster method to be the least effective method. The reason for this is in their fish tank there's going to be hundreds of species of bacteria in there. Now what they do is they bottle up a few of these species in this, in this bottle and it's not nowhere near as much as an established tank. Therefore, it's not very effective. Another thing that I've heard is when you do water changes in this method, it could actually interrupt the cycle. The third one is the fishless cycle. This is probably the most intriguing to me because you don't have to have any fish in the tank while it occurs. Uh, you're just gonna get household ammonia, liquid ammonia, and pour it in your tank and that's gonna raise your ammonia levels for you. Now, the only one to catch is make sure you, when you buy ammonia at any of your local hardware stores or whatever, you're gonna make sure it's not scented, okay? The scented versions can be harmful to your fish once you add them into the tank. The typical method when you're adding ammonia into the tank is you wanna keep it at about two ppm. So you're gonna to wanna to test your water every day to make sure your ammonia levels are consistently at a higher level so that it has enough food so that the nitrite bacteria as well as the nitrate bacteria can colonize. Another cycling method is just adding food into your tank. So uneaten food will eventually decay into ammonia. Now, the only difficult thing about this is it's kind of hard to quantify how much food you need to add to your tank to get the ammonia levels that you're looking for. Now you can use fish flakes or pellets or any type of fish food that it will decay. I've even heard of people putting shrimp in there, frozen shrimp, they'll just drop it in there. But I kind of sway on the side of caution with this because it could also introduce bacteria or some type of parasite to the tank you won't even know is there until your fish are, have been added to the tank. Now there's the plant method of cycling. I had never heard about this until Corey of Aquarium Co-op on YouTube showed us how to do this. Now, it makes a lot of sense though, because plants will consume ammonia and nitrates. So therefore, they're gonna assist with keeping toxic levels down. What's gonna happen is you're gonna plant your tank heavily, and you're gonna wanna use fast growing plants so they can consume all those nutrients that you don't want to be consumed by the fish. Now I consider this to be a more advanced method because as a beginner, you may not know how to grow plants in your tank already. So it could cause a side effect to where your plants die off and you're actually causing more problems than good. But if you could get plants to grow in your tank, it's always a good thing and it will always assist in the cycling method, no matter which way you choose. Now if you're lucky enough, you could choose this last method, which is just using a seeded or already cycled media. 
Now what this means is you're going to take media from an existing tank that's already in there and transfer it over to your tank. And what this will do is give you a big boost star in, in your tank to where you could actually add fish that same, as the, same day that you add the media. When doing this method, just be careful where you get your media from. If you get it from your own tanks, you should be fine. You know what's occurring in these tanks and it shouldn't be any uh, parasites or fungus in that you're transferring over. So you want to be careful like if you get it from a fish store or a friend, you want to make sure they're the type of person that takes good care of their tanks and always keeps high quality fish. If you don't have a friend available or you don't have a tank available that you, to do this type of method, I've also seen that on angelsplus.com they have a cycled media already. I've never done it, but it may be worth a try if it's because if it works, it's a lot easier. So if you're doing a cycle that includes fish, you will see signs whenever ammonia levels start to spike. Things like uh, rapid gill movement, uh, they'll start hiding, lack of activity. Uh, for me, I've seen them where they go to the surface of the water a lot of times, get almost like they're gasping for air. Uh, when this happens, what you want to do is go ahead and stop feeding your fish and go ahead and do a water change immediately. Now some of you may experience what's called a bacterial bloom. Your water will look cloudy, almost like a chemical was introduced into it, but it's nothing to worry about. All it is is a bacterial imbalance and it will correct itself. It's actually a good sign in most cases that your cycling process is going well. Cycling times can vary and depending on the method you chose, some will be shorter and longer than others. Uh, typically, it'll last anywhere from two to six weeks before your tank is actually cycled. So once again, when you have no ammonia and no nitrites and nitrates are present, that means that your tank has been officially cycled. For your nitrate level, you never want it at zero. You're going to want to keep it between 10 and 20 ppm. And then do your water changes when it's, once it hits 40 ppm. Now, when you have a fish tank, evaporation will occur where your water levels will drop slowly. I want you to understand that just adding water to the tank is not considered a water change. That's just refilling the tank from evaporation, but the, the parameters are still at the same levels that they were before the water evaporated. Water changes will be between 10 and 30 percent typically on a weekly basis. That's just the maintenance that will occur whenever you have a fish tank. So for as long as you have a fish tank, water changes will have to be done. So I don't know about you, but I've had enough of that for now. So hopefully this leads you to more enjoyable aspects to fish keeping. And this is an essential part, so I'm happy you took the step and time to take to look at this. Now, I will be trying to make a video at least once a week, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you found this video helpful, go ahead and hit that like. Now, if you have any questions or wanna, wanted to show me some appreciation, you can go ahead and comment below. All right, until next time, guys. I'll catch you later. How to grow plants in the tank. So it may cause your plants to daw, 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 daw.